What is going on YouTube? Welcome back to another video. I find myself like many other New Zealanders. We're getting baited by summer. There's there's no summer. It's rainy, it's wet, it's cold, it's just a little bit miserable. There's been a cyclone that's come through. I don't know, I'm not a weatherman or I don't really know much about the weather. I just checked the app. But it's definitely not summer weather, it's not enjoyable. I was supposed to be grilling a couple days ago now, but now I'll, you'll see what I'm going to be making. We'll get straight into it. I woke up at like 6.30, left the house like normal. It was cold, wet, it was raining. And bro, we're in start of jam. We should be getting like 30 degree weather plus, but there's been like a cyclone that's come through and you know, it is what it is. Well, what I'm going to be making today is I've been craving soup real bad. I've been watching heaps of like ramen videos and stuff like that. We're not making ramen today. We're going to be making a bacon ox soup, which is traditionally bacon ox soup is a winter dish. So I've got my hock here, some red lentils, barley, onion, onion, garlic, and silver beet. Yep. You guys are gonna watch me make a hearty winter soup in the middle of summer, so let's go. I guess the good thing about this is there's a lot of you guys watching my videos from America and it's winter in America, so I think you guys will get more out of this recipe than us here in New Zealand, but to be honest, a good soup is timeless. You can have a good soup in the middle of summer when it's boiling hot. Vietnamese noodle soup pho or bun bo hoi. Those are pretty mean in the summer too. We're gonna start with just prepping our veggies. I'm gonna do an onion. You can leave it big because it's gonna break down in the soup anyway. You gotta let me know, does garlic make everything better? Because I strongly believe garlic makes every single meal better. And this is a whole bulb I'm using. You can think of it as OD or too much, but I don't think so. Garlic's real good for you too. You guys shouldn't skimp on your garlic. It keeps the vampires away. And so what a lot of people don't know with garlic is you can change the intensity by the way you cut it. So if you Cut it like super fine, like real tiny, real tiny. The flavor of this garlic is gonna be super potent. Now, for longer, slower cooks, just, you don't have to go crazy, just slice it like this, bro. And these discs are going to give more of a mellow flavor. It's not gonna be as intense, but, bro, when you're having soup or anything like that, a soup, even like a stew, you don't want to have like overwhelming garlic flavor. So we have the discs and I'll just run my knife through it. So if you don't like garlic, keep it, keep it like this. It will disintegrate in the soup in the cooking process as well and give you less of a garlic flavor. So that's a pretty mean tip to use. Don't be afraid of onion, don't be afraid of garlic. These are aromatics, this is what's going to give our food use soups flavors how you cut your veggies also will dictate your cooking time if you spend all your time prepping your veggies and they real tiny real delicate real nice that's just more time you're spending chopping not everything has to be sliced or whatever whatever the more you make cooking easier for your brain to understand just the better meals you and your family will have next is a carrot Just peeling this, peeling the skin. Now the trick here is, a lot of people use chicken stock, vegetable stock. I'm gonna be using plain water. These peelings, just chuck them in. You don't have to eat them, but they will contribute to the overall flavor of the soup. Same with these carrots, like the onions, top and tail. And we're cutting them, nothing crazy. So just cut your carrots like this, this is probably like a quarter of an inch. 
maybe half an inch, I'm not sure. I don't know, measure in inches. And it won't disintegrate in the soup. It will be real nice and soft. Give you a nice little texture. Next is celery. A lot of people get rid of the leaves, but same with the carrot peels. Just chuck this in, it's gonna flavor our soup. It's gonna flavor our water. You don't have to eat it. The stem, the more traditional part you'd, you'd eat. Break that up. Similar to the sizes we've cut already with the carrot. Just the same. You can probably leave them a little bit bigger because they are softer. And the beautiful thing about celery is you don't need a lot for it to make a massive impact. Oh, flavor. Don't throw this away. And keep them big. Keep them big so you can fish them out. Keep them big. Next to measure up is our barley. And our barley is like a grain or something like that. You just want to add half a cup. That's good, that's like half a cup. Yeah, barley is like a grain or something. It's super hard and you need to cook it for ages to get it soft and to eat it. And these lentils, they're split, split lentils. And same thing, half a cup of these as well. So we're going a full cup of grains. Half a cup of lentils, half a cup of barley. I don't serve this soup with rice or bread or anything like that. A lot of the fat from the ham hock will gelatinize our soup as well as the lentils will break down and they'll give our soup body. And we'll just get it naturally as well as getting all the vitamins, minerals and all the good stuff from these grains. I am going to be making this in a pressure cooker. This is my pot. So we'll start with the veg. Throw that in. Grains. That's barley lentils. And the uh, bacon hock. So the supermarket doesn't actually do bacon hocks now because we're in the middle of summer. It's usually a winter thing. And I mean, this is like ham, like Christmas ham and that. It's cured, but it's not, it doesn't have like that super smoky bacon taste, which to be honest is all good. That's okay. And we just chuck that in. Bro, and what's mean about that, this ham hock, five bucks, five bucks. And you don't want to get rid of any of that skin, that fat. And I'm telling you, it's just like the ham you'll buy at the deli, look. That's mean. So I just checked my fridge for, you know, what else I can chuck in the soup. Because it's it's just, it's a soup, bro. Add whatever you want. There was a piece of ginger molding. Cut off the mold. And this just goes in the pot. Just like that. We're adding enough water until everything is covered. So I think maybe two liters. That's just under two liters, so that'll be alright. That's it. Our soup just needs to be cooked now. The beauty of this is the simplicity, really. So we're cooking this on high pressure for 50 minutes. And that's it, you leave it, it does its thing. Come back in 50 minutes. While I'm still up, I just want to bust out everything else I need to bust out before I sit down and put that all out. So the last ingredient, I guess, is our greens. And I'm using silver beet. This stuff is like, this is like a coarse green. New Zealand is abundant with silver beet. It's everywhere. And to be honest, I had no idea I could pick some up in the middle of summer. I always thought this was like a hearty winter vegetable, but I'm, I'm pretty happy that I can. Unlike our carrot and our celery, we don't really want to be keeping a lot of the fibrous bits because it's not going to contribute to the stock. We're cutting this up for the actual until late like here. All this, all this stuff is fibrous. If you're not on like a raw diet or anything like that, this stalks are so hard they will give you tummy cramps for days. So give these a wash. And these things, I think they might be in the same family as kale, but kale just has a lot more uh, popularity. These guys have a real bad rip, and to be honest, I don't know why, because in the soup, this is my favorite thing. I don't know, I think they have a real bad rip, 
especially for younger people in New Zealand. I think the older generation really, like, this is their hero vegetable. I don't know, I guess there's something for New Zealand to be proud of. And to be honest, it doesn't even taste that bad. It tastes pretty good. The way we want to prep this, the stalk side and the top side, we just want to cut this into strips. Probably when we get closer to the stem, go a little bit thinner. Chuck that in our bowl. Same thing with these guys. Same thing. And that's our greens prepped and done. Be adding this much greens. So you can see this meal sustains you. Gives you energy to continue fighting demons. All right, we're not gonna waste any time. We're gonna get our silver beet. Chuck it directly in the pot. Push it down slightly, use a wooden spoon if you need. This is all, all gonna wilt away anyway. Chuck the lid back on. And we're only gonna cook this for 10 minutes this time. 10 minutes is done and our silver beet is nice and cooked. You can see, look at that rich, flavorful broth. That bacon and that ham's pretty salty, so usually I'll just add some pepper. That tastes real mean. Here's some salt and pepper that I've crushed up the other day. Just gonna add a nice general handful. And this soup is nice and thick. See no sign of the split lentils, they've helped thicken up and give our soup their body. You can slice it up or use two forks, it just completely falls apart and that's what you want. The meat that I've just cut, I've chucked it back in the soup and you can see, look, that is hearty. That is hearty. And you got so much chunks of meat, bro, make this super cheap, super nutritious, super affordable. And it's not one of those soups where it's just pure water. Like you have so much substance here. Look, you don't even need an instant pot. You can just do it on the, on the stove in a normal pot. It will take maybe hour and a half, two hours longer. Here's my bowl. I'm not really that hungry, but I'll have a decent portion, eh? Because this is only meant for today. How about listen to this? I checked the weather app. It's supposed to be shit house today, but the rest of the week, for a whole week, is going to be mean as. Every day is perfect for grilling. So today is the cold, windy day, perfect for soup. And then hopefully I'll be able to get some grilling done tomorrow. Yeah, look at that. That's a fat bowl of soup. Here's the texture, the consistency. You can see it's not like pure water. It's thickened up a little bit and that's due to just the collagen in the ham or the bacon hock as well as the split lentils. Thickens it up while giving us all that delicious nutrients. First taste. All right, let's go. Mmm. Yeah. Man. That's mad comforting, eh? Wow. After, this is like one of those meals after a day where you just don't want to leave the house and you get this in you, bro. It's like the day disappears. Mmm. Mmm, the silver beet in there as well. Mmm, yeah. Mmm, that's hard, that's fire. It doesn't seem like there's a lot of meat, but there's a lot going on in this soup. I really like the consistency. And you know, if you're gonna make this yourself, you gotta season it to your own preference. There is a slight difference using the ham hock instead of the bacon. It's not like ultra noticeable, but you do lose a lot of that like smoky essence. It's not a bad thing. I mean, we're eating 
bloody ham hock soup in the middle of summer. I was craving soup real hard over the last few days as well. Man, this is perfect. And yet again, silver beet is the star. Man, the greens, I don't know what it is about the greens. A little piece of silver beet. It's just like the perfect texture and it absorbs all the flavor. It's like receiving like a big hug, you know? Carrot held up pretty well. Man, oh, it's one of those meals where you need to take a nap afterwards as well. I'm definitely gonna smash this bowl and then maybe even another bowl. I need to eat this before it gets cold. So we're done. We're done, 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 done. Please make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.